as we've stated many times, the first issue or the first question that has to be answered and answered decisively. And thus far, I don't know of anyone, including myself, who cannot answer it other than on the basis of opinion, is this. We have Ezekiel 38 and 39, a Gog and Magog scenario. But we also have Gog and Magog at the end of the millennium in the book of Revelation. <coughs> is there one battle of Gog and Magog, or are there two? Now, given the fact that we must always interpret the Old Testament in light of the New Testament revelation of Jesus, the primary Gog and Magog must be the one at the end of the thousand-year reign, because that's the one where the New Testament cites and puts the emphasis. It does seem to me, and to many people, that there could be two, because the battlefield was being cleaned up of battle debris and weaponry and so forth for seven months. Well, how do you calculate that if we're gone into eternity? On that basis and certain other factors, some people say that there could be two. Concerning the nations themselves, the issue is this. Except for Put, at that, that time called Put, now called Libya, Libya, there are no Arab nations in the constellation of nations coming against Israel. <coughs> it involves Turkey, seemingly Russia, nations that were formerly part of Soviet Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, nations of that nature in Central Asia that are largely tribal and Islamic. That would seem to be the, the alliance of nations coming against Israel, but conspicuously, there are no Arab nations there, with the partial exception or possible exception of Libya. Bearing in mind that the North African population is not all Arab either. It was originally and indigenously, it was either Nubian or it was um, Berber. So we have the situation now. Okay, let's presuppose there are two. But why are there no Arab nations there? This would seem to suggest something has happened to those Arab nations, some kind of an eradication. Different people have postulated different theories, again, theories, none of them provable, such as Bill Salas, that there will be some kind of a conflict with Israel prior to the Gog and Magog events. Other people are simply not sure. It is very, very difficult to be precise, definitive at this point. Could the destruction of Damascus and the destruction of Jordan prophesied in Isaiah, could that be the reason we don't see any Arab nations in the alliance coming against Israel at that particular time? Could that be? There is a third aspect of this problem. There are arguments for and against it being the battle of Gog and Magog equaling the battle of Armageddon being the same. There are arguments for and against. There seems to be geographical differences, but also, although there may be a battle at heart of Megiddo, Armageddon, that's not where the main battle is. That is where the point of, of rallying is. That is where the point of assembly is for the final attack on Jerusalem which will culminate not in the valley of Armageddon or, or the plain of Jezreel in Megiddo, but will culminate on the northern orifice of the Kidron Valley, that is the valley of Jehoshaphat, according to Zechariah. So again, you've got three problems. One, is there one Gog and Magog or two? Secondly, why are there no Arab nations there? And three, is it or is it not the same as the Battle of Har Megiddo? This is the threefold dilemma. When you have something like that, when you have a nebulous and highly fluid situation, particularly where the present current of Middle Eastern events and world events are playing themselves out, we have to be very, very careful about being dogmatic about any of these three things. Now, I lean towards the view, I lean towards the view, but I cannot be dogmatic about it, that there are two battles of Gog and Magog. 
I may be wrong. I'm not teaching it as a doctrine. Whether or not the Arab nations will be eradicated before the Gog and Magog conflict, that is another issue. I'm not dogmatic. And is it or is it not the same as the Battle of Armageddon or Har Megiddo? Well, it would seem not to be, but there are those who feel strongly that it is. I am at this point not prepared to be dogmatic. I know all of the views. I know what people say. I know what people have always said. I understand what people are saying now. But I do not have a confidence in the Lord yet by the Holy Spirit to commit myself beyond what I've already stated. We must be very, very careful. This situation is highly fluid. Now, as I've said before, when we look at what's been transpiring in Syria and in, in Turkey in relation to Russia, it would be easy to see how a Gog and Magog scenario can take shape very quickly. It would be easy to interpret present events in light of those passages. But it would also be very easy to see how it could play out differently. Again, when the time comes, the Holy Spirit is going to show us. The faithful church will know at the proper time. Of that, we may be assured. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering uh, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.